Okay. Um, three. Yeah. So lesson dictionaries. Okay. Right. So let's review what is it about. Okay. So then let's review what is a lesson dictionary in Python. So so we know the lesson dictionary. Okay. Right. Begins with um, a structure, with a structure that is sort of like a list, but the syntax-wise, you use the curly brace to begin and end. You know, when we when we assign a nested dictionary first. So when a curly brace begin and end, you can think of it as a one dictionary. Okay, and so next thing is, so this is understanding which your basic dictionary first because you need to get that right before you think about nested dictionary. So the lesson dictionary, your basic dictionary is the curly brace begin and end. That's important, that's syntax wise. And it's like a list because you can have individual items inside there. And how do we assign individual items? So try to remember in a list, right? So a normal list would be okay, so let me create my list. So let's look at it comparing between the two things, between a dictionary and a list. So the list you use is a sequence of things. The dictionary think of it as also a sequence of things, but the difference is that way you access the items or the way you, the way you manipulate the items are different. So the list has the square bracket to start and end. The dictionary has the curly brace to start and end. And the list, when we create a list, we can't actually like throw a index in and assign a value. Let me try that. Okay. Sorry, take away the dictionary here first. Right. Okay. Now a list in Python is something that's more or less um, something that is uh, I'll say a little bit more stricter, strictly controlled than the dictionary. So if you assign a list, you need to tell Python, hey, I will tell you Python that I have maybe three items in my list, right? Maybe three letters. Like this, or three words, no? So, when Python is, gets assigned a list, you need to tell it what it that is first. A dictionary is like a list, but you don't need to tell it what it has. So, Python is like, treat a dictionary like a box that can put many boxes inside. But a list is like, when you give it a box, it will stay as a box of three compartments or how many compartments. So when you need to add things in, you need to use a list functions at the end, right? Now, dictionary is different in the sense that when you create a dictionary in Python, Python will think of it as creating a, giving you a box which will grow in size as and when you want it to. But the way it grows in size is when you start to assign <coughs> indexes, values. So the dictionary, like dictionary in what it literally means is there's always a key and then there's more behind the key. So that is your basic understanding of the dictionary. And what is behind the key? Now this is where Python gives you flexibility to create anything you want behind the key. So um very involves programming when we when we do that you know, we treat each key like a variable that you can assign any value. You can assign a simple x value. Can assign the same uh, also numbers integers. You can also assign a list inside uh, that index, and not just that you can also assign another dictionary inside the key. But the moment we do that, right? So the dictionary here is assigned to the key in my this dictionary. This is the one that I highlighted here, this becomes a nested dictionary. And Python allows you to nest as many dictionaries as you want, based on what you want to do. So, last week's um, the example was, if I had a class, right? Or high students. Okay. And I create a dictionary, I can maybe perhaps give a student ID and then create another dictionary. Okay, so notice what I've done is I created a dictionary of students, and I say, oh, there's a key in student dictionary that 
the student ID will contain a dictionary again. So I've already nested dictionary. In there, what I can do is that I can start assigning my sub properties. Right? What is that one student dictionary, nested dictionary, maybe things like name, right? And I can add as many things as I want. So, so what happens is that let me highlight this. So this one highlight becomes this is a dictionary. It means anything behind I can assign with this fashion. So this nest this actually is how a dictionary gets nested. <clears throat> and maybe one of the sub not as well nested T <coughs> could be another dictionary by itself. Right? So now these people have a lot of telephone numbers, right? Okay. Or maybe just a new type of Students take a lot of subjects. Okay, like that subjects. And that could itself be in our dictionary. So like what I did here is I created within a nested dictionary. So this is one nested dictionary. This is another nested dictionary. So if you think of it like levels, this is like level one. And then this is like level two. This is like level three. And you can make as many as you want. So when we do this kind of a structure, it's if it usually has a logical idea or categorization. You don't anyhow just create nested ones because you like it, but you tend to follow a natural order of uh, of uh, properties and attributes. Yeah, just like you say, cars among cars, there are brands and you know, all car brands. The type of cars and each car inside has number of wheels and this. So things fall in a certain natural order. And that's how you can think of a destination list. <coughs> like. Now is there a way to pass a list of keys in the dictionary without specifying the values first? Well, now passing the list of keys in the dictionary without values. So in Python, everything that you create hmm, has to have a value. So I think this is a fundamental thing about Python programming is when you assign, in, okay, so let me let me just do this. So if I pass, let's say, student, let me use a student's example. Can I, the question is, pass a list of keys in the dictionary without specifying the values first? So if I go to go to my students, right, and define a list of keys, right? Oh, it's a new student, right? And can I, like, have no values? So let's think of it logically. In Python, when you create a variable or an index here, as I mean, as index here is referring to this dictionary, Python will naturally expect you to assign something there. Now, if you don't assign anything there, like just this, right? So what I'm doing here is like I have a dictionary. I just create a key. I don't put any value there, right? So what happens? Right. So. In syntax wise, so this is a syntax syntax question. Is Python doesn't allow you to create a key without any values. Now, so you're wondering, if I were to do this, like, oh, let me create a key, but I put an empty list like this. Is that a value? Well, actually, there is. So <coughs> when you do that, you're actually assigning an empty uh, list to this key. How about if I do this, like an empty dictionary? Yes, you're assigning an empty dictionary to the key here. So Python never allows you to create a, a, a variable without assigning a value. To them, Python or the computer is like, you're wasting my time. Like, put, give, me a, give you a space, but you don't do anything with it. So when you like, create a space in Python like to store something, like this, it expects you to assign something with equal sign. Something. It can be anything, value, a dictionary, a list. It's importantly, you must have something there. So that should answer the question about is it one key to one value or many values? Yeah, dictionaries is one to one. So one key. Okay, so I mean, on the layman, I mean, look at it this way. Like for example, this, right? This is example. Dictionary key one equals text. So one key here, one value. Now value, if you think of it simply, simply in a simple way, it can be text. 
number. A value can also be a more complex data type. Like a list here. Or another dictionary. So all these we just refer to as values and it fits that definition that when you put something to the list and the key here, it must have a value. It's only one value. It's technically one value. Okay, but you can also argue that hey, if I put a list here, is that is it is it, am I like have one key multiple values? Okay. Well, if you strictly look at this 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 thing on my dictionary that done here. So when I did this four assignment, what happened is that key one in dictionary, in my dictionary, does not have four values. Right? It doesn't after this contain the same key doesn't contain a text, a number, a list, and a dictionary, and an empty dictionary. In fact, it will contain the last item assigned to it. So after doing all this assigning to key one, does it have four values or x number of things that assigned to? Well, to find out, just print out dictionary and a key. Let's see what you get. So as you can see, the printout it refers to the last item assigned to. So keys, in that sense, if we're speaking, is one value. One key, one value. So it's a one to one, not one to many. Okay. Did you, did you, does anyone have a question about what I just explained about dictionaries? Yeah, I'm going to go to yeah. Can everyone hear me all right? <laughs> okay, so are there any more questions about dictionaries? One key but has many value, how to capture a Python. Okay, maybe I should clarify. One key has many values. Are you referring to this example here? When I say my dictionary key one equals to a list of values. <coughs> okay, so strictly speaking, to be very clear, this is still one key, one value. One value is a list. So we don't look at a list as in this risk in this that the way we look at it, we don't look at this as multiple values to the key. We still regard it as one value. Value is one list. But I think you understand where you're coming from. Like technically I'm actually having multiple values to the list, right? Now you can think of it that way actually. If you come across a certain problem, like example, you need to store in one key multiple values. Let's say the problem that you can encounter is that when you want to do the data uh, analysis or transformation, you realize that, oh, that key I need to store multiple values. Like a person, like a student has multiple subjects, right? Okay, so say example, you're doing a little data science thing for the school to compile the average results of the students. And every student has multiple subjects, then my one key actually needs a lot of values, right? Okay. Yes and no. Okay. You can think of the value, multiple values, more like a concept, an idea. Okay. But in Python speaking, strictly speaking, they don't really look at it as different values. It, for Python, you only see it as one value, which is a list. But for you, you don't solve a problem, you can look at it as one value called subjects here. One key has multiple values. Like this. Okay. Now, if you look at it this way, to solve a problem, right? Or oh, one key subject, many values: English, Chinese, math. Uh, because I will need to calculate each of them. What's the score and the average out? Okay. Then you think of it that way is will be easier to solve that kind of problem. So, if you want to think of how do you make in Python create a situation of one key, many values, then you're right to think this way. Like this. 
Because sometimes you actually need to think about the, how to solve problem by thinking about the data, how data should look like to organize. So capturing in Python. Now capturing in Python, I think you come from a different angle. Like if I read the data from files, CSV or Excel files, right? How do I create a one key many value? So it really depends on the Excel file uh, layout or the CSV structure. Now we know that in in, in Excel files or CSV is very is two two dimensional rows and column row and column. So take for example, um, student example. So we know in the school there are many students. Each student takes multiple subjects, and when they start compiling early result, uh, at the end of the year, right, to find out oh the average, the mean, the highest, the lowest, the distribution, things like that. And then you want to find out how everybody is doing, right? So let's just take the example of a Excel spreadsheet that looks a little bit like this kind of format. So in the school, how they were compiled is that of course they have a student ID column. Okay. So maybe each head of department will do their own thing. Not roughly the same kind of format. So here department English will say, oh, here's my student ID. And then here's this CA1, CA2 test. Okay. So the whole year I my students will do a CA1, CA2 and a test. Okay, for English. Then I will compile all the students here into this one file and then put it on one side. The math teacher will also do the same thing, same format. Okay? And the science teacher also do the same thing. So what happens is you realize that the same student ID as long has actually three sets of C1, C2, and TST. You need something in a situation with one key multiple values. The idea is one key multiple values. So when we read the file into Python, then you probably Depending on what you do, you want to actually group it, right, using dictionary by saying what's the key module values. So you need to read the files like three times, read the lines in, and then for each, then sort them, and then compile it based on the IDs. So your eventual result, right, look like something like that structure here. So you also have your subjects. So you maybe not have a list, but more like a dictionary. A dictionary with a key for each department, or each subject that the student took. Okay. Each key <coughs> has also multiple values, like for CA1, right? So this maybe student don't speak uh, English, right? So in order CA1, CA2, and So something like this. So this will be maybe an example of the one value multiple keys. Right. So you capture in Python, normally what happened would be the values will come from text files or CSV files. You need to process line by line. Okay. So but this is how you will imagine your data to look like. So if you already know you're gonna run you're gonna use the data in this format then it's a matter of putting it together okay so let's say i have the uh, so all right pseudo code um so if there are three cc files for three different subjects right all students in school. I'll click average each subject. So this is a very simplified version of one of the typical data science uh, assignments that you get later on. That asks you to take data, compile it, you know, and then do some calculation. The num the typical kind of the and the kind of question you ask you to calculate will be like average, highest, lowest. And then maybe some of the NumPy functions, you can actually uh, do some quick uh, like math related calculations. So that's first, the first part of what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Right? Okay, so we were thinking we're doing the simple file loading. 
So let's so you need to import three files, right? So file one, file so file English. Right? So it goes to read. Yeah. So I'll need to open first. Open and read. <laughs> so one of the examples of the open versus like this one, right? We open and all that. Okay. So this is a very good way to web link to the, the array. Okay. I'm lazy lah, so I always do this kind of copy and paste. Okay, so so maybe there's an English text, English, right? HTT file. Every line contains something like the Excel for columns. So found you open. So you had to create like English points, right? So quite likely, very likely, it's gonna look something like this, right? So you have different files. And you need to do the imports. Okay, so let me do this copy and pasting. Yeah. Quite uh not the brightest way. Okay. This way so you, the idea is you read the three files, read the triple three files and then later you form a kind of a structure. Uh one too many kind of structure. So left line, canyon lines. So when you got all these files into a different line list, okay, then you might do something like so you sort lines list by student ID, something like that. And then once you've done that, then you can merge to dictionary. So the general idea is that um in next lesson hours we're doing NumPy, uh, there will be a chance to do something like this again. Okay. So what you're asking about is a little bit uh, forward into the next class. Okay. So in NumPy will be okay, NumPy in the next lesson will be touching a lot on list. Um so NumPy is basically a whole library where it gives you additional functions. That you could have done, you could have done it in normal Python, right? But you take a few lines to write. So some of the functions are, are quite uh, useful for processing data and all that. So it's more like functions that, that useful functions that people wrote, and then you can you can actually use it most most of the time. So if you're able to like uh, get get carried away with this part, right? So I'm doing this is assuming that your English and Chinese and math like, all have the same number of rows every student takes every subject okay no one's missing right for el yeah. so of course you need to sort the line is by student ids accounting oh so there's a few ways to, to really do this this conversion of um three different files into one actually one single dictionary and quite a lot of ways one of the ways to do this is to start creating a dictionary for students, right? And then take the first English lines list and then go through every item and start populating the students that key. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is now the sorting here is the very idea. The, the objective is I want something that's grouped together so I can pull it together, right? So here's when dictionaries are quite interesting. Now, so imagine after reading the files, I have three, three uh, data of this: English lines, Chinese line, math line. So every English line will contain a student ID, right? So let me just put comment here. So there's a student ID, probably followed by a comma in uh, CSV file, right? So the C1 score. C1, then C2, and then test, right? So something like this format, comma separated. 
but all the Chinese line, image line, English line, all have the same structure, all have the same number of rules, it's fairly easy. So I have first create dictionary for students. Okay, because I use a student ID, the first column, first column value to as my key. Now when I do that, I actually don't need to actually sort yet. Okay, maybe sorting will do later. So what I do is do that, create a dictionary first, and then for PL student, or maybe for student in English lines, right? Then I'll say, oh, um, now I'll do this thing called split, right? Parts. So I'll take the student line, okay, split it using comma. So when I split it, right, basically I'll get a word array or a list, like a list, sorry, okay, array. We call it a list also. So I get a list, right, which will have four parts or four indexes. Index 0 will be the ID, index 1, the CA1, index 2, CA2, index 3, the text. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to pull out the student ID as a key so that later when I go through the Chinese line and the math line, it's very easy for me to get the CA1, CA2 and test numbers for the student. Right. Okay, so, so maybe I haven't explained to you what is the final structure of the student dictionary that I like. Okay. So let me open my brain and tell you what is my students. So this is how I might like my student structure to look like. So my student structure is a dictionary that consists of the student IDs, right? Okay. Each student ID will contain their scores. Now let's say the idea is how to calculate average, right, of each student for each subject. So each student ID here, right, then it will contain a dictionary again. Okay. Sorry, let me go to the comment code here. So each will have a student ID and a uh, student ID followed by a nested dictionary of the subject. So maybe for English, I just put a, okay, just be explicit, English, right? And then you have your CA1, CA2, and T test. So every subject is going to have its own T. So this is the one to many half situation I want to create a structure. So that later when I want to do a calculation, uh, that will be fairly easy for me to do it. Okay, then the last one, math. Okay. So how to achieve this structure, right? So I know my English lines has student ID and a couple of stuff. So when I go to English lines, I explicitly students, right? I get parts one. So parts one will give me a student ID when I first split. Okay. So the moment I do that, I need a sign. So this is the student ID. This is the parts one. It will contain a dictionary. Okay, so I can continue to do this, right? And then I'll say, oh, this is the first key, right? English. Now, English will be equal to a list, which is here. And then I need to have my individual value, CA1, CA2, and test. Now, this tree comes from parts index 1, 2, and 3. And I need them to be numbers. So, well, a uh, simple way to do this is to take each part and do a conversion. Okay, so this is one way to do it. Okay. Maybe not the best way. I think there's another way to do this. So, okay. <clears throat> So this is what we do it, that means I manually say, oh, part index, parts index 1, which is CA1, index 2, and then um, convert to integer, and then put it in the list for English. So this is the first part. How about the rest? No, how do I put in the Chinese and math results? 
so for your English here so here what I can actually do also I'm, I'm doing something very a little bit dangerous because I'm assuming Chinese and math have the same number of lines okay so remember the loop that gives you the counter right so okay so English has a line right so you can actually do this you can actually have another line similar to this to grab the Chinese and math line So how do I so there is the part where I need to get the AC mm. Oh yeah, okay. Try recall. Now there's the other comma, there's another way to get the counter from here. I think we did that before in the previous uh, class. But that was a dictionary. That was using a dictionary to give us a counter, uh, the index. Oh, okay. Easier way. So let me pull. Instead of pulling out the uh, line by line, right? Give me I. Student equals to. So what I just did is I instead of going line by line, which gave me the text, I wanted the counter, which is the i. So I create a range for this where i is in range. So the i will be iterated side from zero all the way to the length of line, which is the number of students. So here, then I will pull this. So I use the i as a way to in, to get give myself that line, which is student, and then from student I split the parts, the commas to give me the parts. Okay, now since I know the I right, I can also get me the Chinese. So, okay, one thing you have also notice that when you're in the colon, so the colon always please, the colon is followed by the indent. The indent, whatever the indent, if I have a spare line between, it doesn't affect the code. It's still part of, the, part of this loop here. Okay, so I always pull the Chinese line. So the Chinese line is here, right? And I refer it by the same line. And then what I do is after I put the Chinese line, of course I also need the parts, right? Okay. So let me we use a parts variable, assign it by the Chinese split. And then this time round, I will assign the students ID Chinese equals to this. And then once I'm done with that, I can look at the line again to give me the math. Because this math will be coming from the math line. Okay. So the math line, I so what happening is that are you because I'm assuming all three files, all three lists of lines will have the same number of students and the same students, right? Or same number, same number of lines. So when I run through every line in English, I also Go look, look at the first next the first next available line based on the index i for the Chinese and the math file. Pull out the, the student ID and then, create, and then assign the dictionary value to the student and then followed by their CA marks here. So this would combine my three files into a single data structure where I have the um, student ID followed by their individual subjects and individual subjects you have the CA marks. Then here you have like a one student ID, multiple subject, one subject, multiple uh, marks structure. Okay, comprehensions. So this comprehensions as dictionary comprehension help you build the nested loops uh, into these comprehensions. Okay, so comprehensions basically, uh, okay, so comprehensions, something like this, right? Now, 
you get rid of this or a dictionary. So, so with this combination first, right? So let's say this combination, this numbers here contained, right? So assuming this numbers here is uh, something like statistically, so let's you know plenty more data. List of list of people, so list of scores. Okay, I'm creating a comprehension of this. Um, so this combinations, I think believe in the examples right given is when I take so one of these combination what can this combination do is it basically simplifies the way you you operate on a list. So normally when we operate on a list for example to manipulate every single value here right to a new list. Okay we traditionally would say oh I'll create a list here then I'll do a call I Okay, and then I do append the, append the transform value. Maybe what I do is I times divided by, say, let's say this is a list of scores. I want to divide, divide, by the, divide by the average, okay, average scores, the benchmark score. Okay. Okay. Give me some kind of a indexing or a grading. So this is the, this is normal traditional way of doing. You can still achieve the same thing. Now let's comprehensions in the same uh, in the same respect. Okay. So instead of having a loop here to do this, what I do in the comprehension is that I immediately within the line here I create uh, the values I want. So I turn to sixty five. So what happened is that instead of using a for loop, right, and then running a pen, what I do is the for loop here is this. So this is my for loop for item in the list will give me every item. So this combination will apply based on the iterator, apply your own function on the iterator. In this case, I divided by 65. Okay, and then I put this whole thing into the list itself. Now, if you don't do the list, uh, this list object around it, okay, you get a, you get an error. Because Python, in this case, when it starts to look at a syntax, you go, oh, you want to do an item divided by sixty-five, okay, um, but then because it's not, it doesn't exist inside the square brackets. So this comprehension, it assumes that this is a operation by itself, which then it doesn't make sense to have something like four after it. Now you do have then provided the square brackets around it, and you think, oh, if I encounter a value here that I can find inside a for statement here, or there is I know you're trying to do this comprehension, then I will do a comprehension as in every value here in my list, the for item, I will do the operation that you have defined earlier and store it into the list. Okay. So this is this comprehension. Uh, so these two things, this line cell 5 and cell 8 here, you can see the difference in terms of the, the line of code to execute the same thing for this comprehension. Now this comprehension can also be done in for dictionaries. So so my students. So let's say I want to create a simple dictionary. Okay. I, maybe I have values right right. So this dictionary could be oh scores. Okay. So how do I do a list comprehension in this case? Now the list comprehension or dictionary comprehension uh, idea probably still follows. What do I want out oh, the students? Do I want a list here or do I want I think likely it's a list here, right? So can I do a list comprehension on students? Let's try. So the same idea for Iterator, right? Well, maybe for the key value in students. So we remember what the key and value, how it works, right? So we do it for key and value. Let's, let's print. I think is it items? No. Oh, I must have an item. Sorry. Yeah. So when you do a when you have a dictionary and you call dot items, you can access both key and value. 
Now if I say I want to do a list comprehension, a dictionary comprehension, or maybe a list, because my eventual my output is gonna be a list. So I'm gonna put this thing in a square bracket because my output is a list. What is a list? I'm gonna take this tree score and divide it by maybe a, a benchmark, maybe 50. So here's my for loop for t value. I wanna I'm only interested in the value. So let's see if this works. Okay, so I forgot to print. So now this is what happened in the same idea for this comprehension I apply to dictionary comprehension. So using the for loop, okay, and Python recognizes if you put it in a square bracket, you're trying to do some kind of this comprehension. So I can actually take the key or value from the items and do a calculation here to do to store into a list. Right? So how do I how do I have gotten the individual individual let's say, the, this result? Now we'll have actually run a for loop for a for loop key value and did a append and take the value divided by 50 to get me this result. So this is how you can apply your comprehensions like this to a dictionary as well. So shall I try one more example? So can I convert do a dictionary comprehension of this? <laughs> Let's try. So if I have a four key value here, so I'll try to do a can I do a two dictionary comprehension? I did this right. Maybe I want to swap. So my dictionary comprehension can be I swap the five right, swap the mark and the A B. So what I'll do is value P. Now, what happened here is, so now I'm trying to do dictionary comprehension. So I'm manipulating dictionary, the key value part, simply swapping the position. Output should be a brace because the up, uh, what I'm trying to create is a dictionary out of this exercise. Now, does it work? I think it's the other way. Dictionary comprehension, okay, slightly different, right? I still have a comma. So why is there a colon? Okay. Now the colon is there because of this. In dictionaries, we define a relationship between key and a value using the colon. So when I do something like this in a dictionary comprehension, flip the value and key, I use the colon to tell the pattern that now here's my new key and here's my new value. So what's the value in what's the idea in doing this? <clears throat> At the moment probably not much, but I can suppose I suppose what can happen is if you attempt to do a dictionary comprehension of the sort, right? Okay, I'm gonna create one more value here. Student D has 56. Now a dictionary comprehension reduces this to something else. So the marks become the marks become the key, right? Which means C or D, which one will appear as a value? The last one in the list will appear as a value. Now, probably now it's not really the best uh, example of how this should work. Okay. But I think maybe to me is that if I want to swip, swap it around, I'll probably be interested in, hey, how many how many people got 35? How many people got 45? How many people got 56? Okay, that kind of idea. Mm. Uh, but probably I can't really do. I don't think I can really do that here. Okay. So this is dictionary comprehension, swapping key and value over. How do we build nested loops into this comprehension? Can we build nested loops in here? Okay. It's interesting, right? Hmm like nested comprehensions also. Okay, now if you have nested dictionaries, can you then have a list comprehension that has nested values? So, take an example as this, as one student. Or let me make something a little bit more dynamic. Okay, so let me declare a student okay, with nested uh, dictionaries. So P1, P is 30, right? P is 
30, C is 40. So, so this is a dictionary of definitely nested. Okay. So let me try to do a uh, comprehension nested loops. Okay. Is that the question? Nested loops into comprehension. Can you build nested loops into comprehension? Try to guess. I'm trying to figure out what your question really means. Like I'm going to try to loop loop inside. I'm going to do loops inside a nested uh, nested loop inside comprehension. I mean, there's a loop inside here. <laughs> okay, or something else. So, um, working backwards, what am I trying to achieve with lesser loops? So now the key is T1. So it simply probably sounds a lot like, you know, doing a pivot table in Excel. You sort the X and Ys around, right? So now I'm trying to pivot to E and C. So now this key is T1. Can I like pivot the whole thing so that my dictionary starts? Dictionary is just E and C. Okay. And then this number is like the average. Okay. Not crazy. Um, so let's try to do that. So if I were to pivot, uh, let's say, go by subjects, right? So E and C are subjects. So the idea is subjects will be a dictionary that has E and C. Okay. How do I get the E and C to be that part of the value? So for student ID okay, and subjects and subs, right? In students items. So this is my first for loop. Okay, the initial the initial loop to go through every student ID. Okay. It will give me if I don't change anything. Right. So this is what I can get. So how I can change the key row. Now I will need it to change it to more than this. I think can I possibly do that? So I have student subs. So for <coughs> I think it's actually Python to do this. Only I like to put some brackets so I can get an idea, better idea. Now for subject, right? Subject score in. Okay. Mm, let me think this. So for students, subs, okay, I get. This I get. So I got this this first, right? I want to only I want to insert in this part. E the E the average of E is an average of C. This give me the so I'm interested in subs. Just intro to see what happens when I do this. Just want to take a peek. Does this work? Subs. So the subs are values. If the subs are keys, the subs are not keys, right? The key this is the key, and this is the value that I throw it on. Okay, so this is the key. So that's a key. That's not that's not a single value. It's actually a dictionary again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we are going to use a comprehension this way. Okay, so I think this is getting a little bit uh, okay too much here. Now if I do comprehensions to this extent, 
Okay, no, because I don't need student ID anymore. So what happens if I do this? Okay, so I need to give myself. Ah, okay. Curious, right? So, because I'm not concerned with the student who, I only want the E and C. So this one, I, if I do this, so what I'm doing is a list comprehension in dictionary. Of every item, I pull out the subs, which is this one, into a list. Okay, so this has become a list. Now I want to pull out for every list item, pull out the E and the C. Okay. Let's try it huh? So four. So if this, this is actually the list, right? So four. So this is actually student. So this is the value. So I want to no. All to do is flatten the list. Oh, okay. So why she need to do is to flatten this whole thing into dictionaries, but I can't because ENC are repeated. So so for each object S. So S will be each object, right? What is the P and what is the value? So P here will be E, right? And the value need to be calculated again. So if I go for S this, so what's the T and value? P will be here we actually every object. No, not going anywhere. Maybe I think too 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 much trying to to uh, do one liner. Okay. If I maybe if I were to think simpler simpler in the case, if I were to think simpler, right? This is what this is what it might look like. Okay. So this is how it looks like, right? So for students and students, okay. So here I'm not sure you're gonna be using. Am I gonna using? So every student here will give me this. Am I gonna be ending up with this comprehension? Well, do I need to do that? Let's say I don't need this comprehension. <laughs> okay. If I don't need this comprehension, then it becomes a loop. You see the loop, right? So other items will be subject score. So when I do this for items, I get subject score, which is the E and the temperature, right? Okay, each pair. I need to pull, push this into the subject score, right? But later on, I need to calculate the so called the final. Uh, now, this is the one that you can actually use the iterator. Uh, what's the iterator? So where was the code that did the iteration to get the index from person? Uh, Enumerate. Yep. So enumerate. So remember the enumerate. Okay. So the enumerate will be. Uh, the enumerate should be actually pretty useful. Actually, no need. Everything. No need. Actually, sorry. 
don't need anyway. Don't need to calculate the average, right? Right. Okay, so at the end of the whole thing. So here the subjects will have a total, right? So So I'm gonna do a conversion. So what am I doing again, right? Well, I'm gonna cal calculate the average for each subject. So, wait, string has no actual items. Oh, wait. String has a. Oh, okay, this is weird. Oh, sorry, that's a key. Okay. Completely forgot about that. Yeah, it's the key. Error E. Okay, here's the part, that's right. <laughs> oh, apparently I can't do that. That will be a total. Oh, okay. Wait. So my subjects here is this. Let me print out the subjects. Sometimes when I call, you need to print lines in between to see when I'm getting corrected. Oh, plus equals score. Ah, okay. Hold on. This is a key error. Students. Oh, because the T, the T. Ah, uh, okay. I check one very important thing. So what happened just now of getting a key error is because when you do a plus equal, it, before you do a plus equal operator, this has to have a value. But the first time when it's created, it doesn't have a value there yet. So let's check. If the subject key is inside there, then I will need to assign initialize it with a value. The current score. Else, we'll addition. Okay. okay, so this is my total. All right, that looks correct. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is value here. So the value here is going to divide by the length number of keys in student. See that work no in the pack. Oh wait. Student keys. Let's see. Ah, the same keys.
not enough values to unpack. So about this here. Expected two got one. Okay. That's strange. So where the error coming from is for this comprehension. So let me clear my subject. Such as this. There are two this dictionary has two values. Two keys and two values. Expected two got one. Okay. Mm. So key value for key value here. I wonder why is it telling me this? 